Hi, Bim. Yeah, well, we started today uh, with a presentation from Bain and from Jean-Pierre about conglomerates in Southeast Asia and the rest of the world. And now I managed to grab him and I've got him here to talk about it. So, Jean-Pierre Fellenbolt, Managing Partner of Bain Indonesia. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Blaise. Your, your report, Teaching Dinosaurs to Dance. How do dinosaurs dance? Well, that's a uh, good question. I guess the, the question is why do we call conglomerates dinosaurs? and uh, can they dance? The reason why, Blaze, we, uh, we thought this would be a good question is that in most part of the world, outside of Asia, uh, conglomerates are really like dinosaurs. They are mostly extinct. And in fact, uh, even as we speak, uh, General Electric, which maybe was the most notorious example you know, of an exception in the Western world of a highly successful conglomerate, is announcing that they are divesting a very big part of their portfolio that basically selling all their real estate and financial services business. So uh, that's why we call them dinosaurs. But why, why would they dance uh, is a question we ask ourselves. Because when we looked at uh, Asia, in contrast, in particular South Asia, uh, and I would include India as well as part of it, uh, there are a lot of conglomerates in that part of the world. And not only are there a lot of conglomerates, but they appear to be doing very well. So the whole report and the whole uh, uh, purpose of our study was to try and understand whether there was some kind of exception in Asia. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that just uh, the spur of the moment and were they going to go down the same fate as dinosaurs, you know, uh, other conglomerates in the Western world, or was there something specific, uh, at least to the best of them, which uh, uh, we could learn from. So that was the, uh, that was the purpose of the study. Can you um, break down conglomerates by region a bit, by economy? I remember you, you, you had pioneering, then emerging economies, and then the mature markets. And yes, uh, uh, definitely. Uh, initially, we looked at conglomerates in the whole of South Asia, and we found that they were, uh, first of all, they were numerous. They accounted for 20 to 30 percent of the largest companies in those economies, and they were also outperforming not only conglomerates in the western part of the world, but they were also doing better than pure plays. In other words, companies which are singly focused on one sector. A single business focus. But, but as we went deeper into our research and tried to understand what had made conglomerates successful, sometimes over a span of 10 or 20 years, we actually found it very useful to distinguish the stage at which the economy, their home market economies uh, were at. Uh, because we found out that the rules of the game were actually very different in different stages of evolution of the economy. So we basically broke down the economy of South Asia into three groups, three macro groups. The first group is what we call uh, uh, pioneering economies. So the economies which are at the very beginning of their industrial phase. Um, I would put Indonesia, where we are today, as part of that group. Uh, you would put Vietnam in, as part of that group. You would put the Philippines as part of that group. Then, of course, you know, there are economies which have already somewhat down the path of more uh, industrialized economies, slightly more sophisticated markets for capital and labor. And we put Malaysia, Thailand, and even Singapore in that group. And then, of course, you've got the very mature economies, either in Asia, that would be Japan or Australia, uh, or even South Korea or uh, the Western world. And we found out that the rules of success at each stage uh, of development, those three groups for conglomerates were actually very different. And therefore, conglomerates, which really had to prepare themselves for the next stage of development of their markets, they were going to be thriving for the long term and not become extinct like the dinosaurs. Well, what makes a modern conglomerate successful? So um, we took as a simple measure of success the fact that they can sustainably over a long period of time deliver superior returns to their shareholders. So a very financial matrix. And we look at those companies which were able to do that over a 10 year period. And we look at their uh, traits of success. So if we come back to the three clusters, which I mentioned, uh, let me maybe emphasize some of the traits of success and how they differ from stage to stage. So uh, we found that there were four distinctive traits of conglomerates which play different roles at different stage of evolution of their market. Uh, the first one is uh, leadership. Uh, is a conglomerate, uh, does a conglomerate hold leader position in different businesses in which they participate? Now that trait we found 
was actually very important at all stages of development of the market. Three, the only trade, which is incredibly important, whether you are in a pioneering economy, in an emerging economy, or even a mature economy. Mm. However, when we looked at another trade, which is sector selection, so is the conglomerate position itself in high growth sectors in the economy, sectors which grow faster than the GDP, or as a more biased or lower growth sector, how important is that to their performance? Mm. So we actually found that this was actually very important in the early stage, early stage economies. And uh, a good example, for instance, would be in Indonesia would be Astra, which is a very successful conglomerate here. Uh, in the early 50s, they invested in the agribusiness. They were a trader of agribusiness commodities. And in the 60s and 70s, they picked up some very high growth sectors, which was uh, motorbikes, automotive, uh, all those sectors which were growing you know, very fast in the economy. Today, they've actually decided to go into diversified areas, but they see now as high growth, like life insurance, construction, toll roads. So picking sectors, very important in the early stage, whereas in the maturing stage or in uh, emerging markets, we found that picking sectors is not as, imp as important. You find some very high performing conglomerates which have a mix of reasonably low growth sectors, but they have very strong leadership position in those sectors. So to summarize, in the early stage, uh, picking sectors is important. In the later stage, it's actually picking sectors where you can build leadership position which become much more important. Okay, well, we'll move more into leadership and uh, sectors in just a moment. We've got to take a quick break. We'll be back very soon.